name? Friends and neighbors? Or shall I say this afternoon? Welcome back to the Steelers franchise on Madden 22. I'm your host, longtime listener. Be sure to drop a like, hit the subscribe button, and comment below. Uh, we've got the Bears this week. We're at home. They're 4-4 four and four coming in, so they need a win. Um, and I'll go ahead and tell you right now, for whatever reason, I've had trouble when I've played the Bears historically, and I really worry about it now that they've got Justin Fields because I'll bet you he's just an absolute mess to try and deal with. So if he gets off to a hot start, look out because we could be in some serious trouble. Uh, Ray Ray McLeod, at 24 years old, and a 70 overall. He's actually a decent slot receiver, and he's a pretty good kick returner. Um, we're going to give him this offer of two years, six and a half mil. See if he signs. If he does, there we go. Perfect. I wonder if there's an element of, like, people being more willing to sign whenever your team is doing well. So, like, do you risk them not being as willing to sign if you go late into the season – and then your team's not doing well, but you get the advantage of if you wait, they're easier to sign if you get off to a good start. So if anybody knows the answer to that, please post that in the comments. Robert Spillane, middle linebacker. He's a depth guy. I'm going to bring him back because he's young and he's decent, and I don't feel like having to go find somebody else to take over his role. But also, he's very balanced. 70 is a run stopper. And then 69 and 68, respectively, are, you know, that's that's the kind of balance that I like to see in guys. Uh, he didn't like the cash part of the offer, but we'll get him signed. Don't worry about that. So, what else? There's a lot going on uh, before we get into the ball game this week. Take a look at weekly strategy. There's a couple of players' upgrades to, to take care of. We are going to defend the deep pass, make him keep it in front of us, and take away the big play. Uh, we're going to go half pads for a little while to try and keep everybody fresh from here on out. So that's that. Run inside. I'm good with that. Wait, actually go back because we need to drop down to half pads on the offense as well. That game took a lot out of us. Dang, we're coming off a of bye week and they were struggling. All right. And now we're not going to score five rushing touchdowns. Come on, guys. Let's get realistic here. Let's go with throw two touchdown passes as our weekly goal there. Then we'll come over here and say we want to win the turnover battle, as always. We're going to try and rush. Let's take care of the football. No turnovers. Win the turnover battle and get to the quarterback. Yep. There we go. That's our objective. Now we should be able to start the training. And I don't really know why I'm showing you all this stuff, because it's probably not that much fun to watch, to be honest. Uh, it's fairly monotonous uh, to go through it week to week anyway, but it's a part of the game. I like to you know, not necessarily micromanage everything, but at least kind of stay involved. Let's see what player upgrades that we got, and then we'll dive into the game. So Kevin Dotson at left guard gets one. Uh, we're going to stick with the power for the scheme fit. He's up to a 74 overall. How old is he? 24. And he's got star dev traits, so he's going to be pretty good. Uh, give him a few more years, and he's going to, you know, anchor that left side of the line. And then Joe Schobert gets one. We're going to stick with Field General. I find that that tends to be the most balanced of the attribute upgrades that you can take. And anything else that you guys need to see before we get into the ball game? Actually, yes. We've got injuries. A core of four is coming back. Isaiah Bugs is coming back. And Deontay Johnson is coming back. Um, we knew that that was all coming, so I will deal with the depth chart now that those injuries are behind us, and then we will jump into the ball game. All right, so we are ready to go here as far as our Week 9 game against the Bears. The Bears. But, you know, I started thinking about kind of where we're at in the season. We're sitting at 7-0. and 0. 
which is a little bit, not a little bit. That's pretty darn unrealistic if you ask me. The Steelers are not a 7-0 and type of football team. Now, let's look at the schedule real quick because I want to explain, uh, you know, the logic behind the decision that I'm about to make. Uh, so every game that we've played, so disregard that it says that we played this game three times because I think what happened there was the first time I wasn't recording. Or no, the first time I had the wrong offensive playbook, then I realized that I wasn't recording, and then we played the game. Every other game, obviously, we just played it as we went, and things went down the way they did. Now, we won by 5, 5. We won by 10 at home against the Bengals. That's our biggest margin of victory. We snuck one out against the Packers. I think it was a late touchdown that gave us the lead in that one. Actually, I think, did that game go to overtime? Uh, we beat the Broncos by seven in a low-scoring game. Snuck one out against the Seahawks. And then we edged out the Browns last week. So a lot of the games are coming down to, you know, late possession. Uh, and we're, you know, just kind of squeaking out victories. So... I'm okay with winning games like that, but we shouldn't win all of them. Um, so there's that. Now I want to also look at stats, because if we look at kind of how we're winning, early on we realized that we were running the ball pretty well, and we, we made some adjustments there. Um, as far as our offensive production... I'm going to actually sort. We are dead last in offensive production. And it's like our passing has been awful. A lot of that is we just can't protect Big Ben and get the ball downfield. Our running game has actually continued to be okay. Where are we? We're, we're in the top, you know, third maybe. Points per game. We're still toward the bottom of the league, although we're, we're, yeah, we're, we're toward the bottom. So we're not scoring a lot of points. That's pretty obvious. And it's because we aren't able to throw the ball very well. But defensively, we're also doing a really good job here. So, and, you know, against the pass, we are, well, if we sort this way, we're actually doing a really good job stop in the pass that's actually way better than i expected and then against the rush we are the best in the league points against we are the best in the league we're getting sort the other direction we're getting a fair number of sacks a lot of those are coming from our linebackers because we're having to blitz a lot we're not getting a lot of fumbles but interceptions, I'll bet you eight puts us near the top of the league as well. So, it's been all defense. There's no question. Our defense is winning games for us. Um, so, we can do two things here. Um, now, the reality is, I could go in and mess with the sliders and make it to where, like, we're able to throw the ball a little bit better. Uh, and the opposing teams are able to throw the ball a little bit better. So let's actually look at the sliders real quick and um, just see if there's anything that kind of jumps off the page. Like, I think our QB accuracy is fine. We're not having a ton of throws that are off the mark. We're having some, but I kind of want that. Our pass blocking is probably where it needs to be. Big Ben's getting sacked about three times a game, uh, which is fairly realistic. Our catching has been okay. Run blocking is about the way we want it now. Now, our pass coverage. I'm really torn on what to do here. When we turned interceptions down a little bit, that has made it to where over the last few games we're not getting a ton of interceptions. Um, and the reality is we don't break up a lot of passes. So even with these the way they are, we're not going to force a lot of incompletions what we will do is be close enough to guys to at least hopefully make a quick tackle and i'm okay with that we've turned the qb accuracy up for um the cpu a little bit recently um 
So there's that. I kind of want to adjust pass blocking to where our D-line gets a few more sacks, but the problem is, as much as I blitz, that could be a challenge. If I were to do this, what I would have to do is, like, make a rule where I can't make a decision as the user to just blitz on a whim because I was supposed to be covering the halfback or whatever. Like, my rule basically gets limited to pass coverage and going and tackling the guy. Because I do get a fair amount of sacks with Devin Bush just by running up the middle and nobody, nobody being ready to block me. And I think some of that is actually, like, Madden, as far as the AI, <clears throat> doesn't even assign the offensive line or the blocking scheme to think about a guy who's not supposed to be blitzing, if that makes sense. So that's one thing that we could do. Let's do that. Let's turn this down a little bit. I'm no longer allowed to blitz um, with with Devin Bush. And in fact, let's actually go look at how many sacks Devin Bush has. Because if I've got like six or seven of the 18 that my team has, then I'm going to crank this pass blocking down even a little bit more because I want somebody to be able to make up for it. I don't want sacks to just completely like go off the radar for this team. Uh, wait, no, no, no. I don't want that. I want player stats like Big Ben dead last in the league in yards but he's got 11 touchdowns he's actually been okay the completion percentage I feel like is realistic his passer rating is about realistic he's just not getting a ton of yards and some of that is that we're not throwing it a ton either he's at about 30 attempts per game um, and we're just not able to get it downfield so anyway uh, what are we looking for defense yeah Devin Bush has six so let's look at like who's next highest on this list it's got to be TJ Watt right yeah so what will and he's getting about one a game which I feel like is probably fair so we are going to adjust that passing block pass blocking slider a little bit more and then institute a rule where I am not allowed to blitz with Devin Bush unless I've actually called that with the play call. So we'll see if that helps <clears throat> make it a little bit more realistic on that front. So turn this down a hair and then as in exchange for that, not only will I not be blitzing, I'm going to turn down pass defense reaction time by five. I don't want to do it too much because I don't want it to be like just defenses getting or quarterbacks picking us apart. So we'll see the passing numbers maybe increase a little bit for our opponents and that is going to make it harder for us to win if our you know defense is giving up points. So there are some adjustments that we've made to try and make our gameplay a little bit more realistic now another thing that I've decided to try and do and this is going to help us in a number of ways but I'm going to start simming a few games and I think my new policy is going to be if we win three games in a row we will sim until we lose um, or something along those lines now since we've won seven games in a row I'm gonna sim until we lose at least two games I want to get our record to be a little bit more realistic um, you know compared to our expectations at 7-0 7-0 we're gonna make the playoffs barring a major collapse so now that we kinda know that I wanna get through this and I already did some testing like looking forward into the scouting situation so I kind of know what to expect, but everything is ready to, to like get into the gameplay here against the Bears. We've got them at home, so there's still a chance we win this game, but I wouldn't be shocked if we lose. So just kind of brace yourselves. We're giving up on the perfect season. <laughs> Look, we win by one point. Now we get the Lions at home, and we're looking at going 9-0. and Then it's a, a gauntlet of the Chargers and Bengals on the road then we play the Ravens 
So there are some losses on the horizon. But we're eight and zero. The Browns lost again to fall to six and three. So we're in really good position to make the playoffs and possibly even win the division still. So Spillane is 25 years old to 70 overall. He's a pretty good depth player. Um, I'm going to go ahead and try and bring him back. Two years at about three million a year is fine. Have I already started to negotiate with him yet? Yeah, he wants more money. So, mo money, mo money. We'll give you two more points on the signing bonus, and then we'll beef up the salary by one notch. That should do it. There we go. All right. How are we doing on the salary cap? We'll take a look at that in a second. Now, Killebrew is 28 and a 68 overall at free or strong safety. Is there anybody else? Yeah, he's the only one that we're looking to re-sign. He wants two years, and he's not asking for a ton of money. Actually, let me look at something real quick. Uh, depth chart is Edmonds and then him. Yeah, let's go ahead and, and just bring him back. That way I don't have to worry about going and finding somebody for depth. Uh, let's just do that and see if he's happy. Boom. Sometimes just adding like one little bit of bonus money or salary does the job. All right. Anybody else we need to negotiate with here? Negative. Um, so we still have a fair number of guys to sign, but we're getting into the point where a lot of these aren't going to cost me as much. Um, and so I think we're going to have a fair bit of cap money left at the end of the season, which is kind of good because that'll give me some flexibility to go spend some cash on a free agent or two. So we'll see how that shakes loose. Um, what was I going to do? So let's go to the manage staff tab and I want to look at adding another focus player we've got 29 staff points to burn and i think i can just add the next oh wait we haven't even gotten this one yet so let's get that and i think i can add the next two in that slot see it says it's available for purchase so i need another 20 but that's pretty cool that we can add a you know, a second, maybe even a third without having to go and get any of those other prerequisites. So another 20 points, and then we'll have another focus player. <clears throat> so that's that. Now, watch us lose to the freaking Lions. You can almost just see it coming. <laughs> We're 8-0, no, they're 1-7. We're playing them at home. We'll get beat. All right. Defend the outside run. Probably a good idea. DeAndre Swift not likely to burn us going up the middle. Although, this is a team that likes to throw the ball. Let's focus on the pass. And let's stop the medium passes. Right? Yeah. Let's defend the medium pass. And how are we doing here? Am I doing half pads? I probably need to be. Yeah, let's try and stay half pads for a while and keep everybody fresh. We don't have any more buys, so... Alright, this is a team that runs a lot of zone. Let's try and run it between the tackles. And let's make sure we're half pads here, as we are. And now... Team Profile. They want me to throw for 350 yards. Wait, why is it not showing me? Oh, it already picked one up. And they, they went with, looks like Kendrick Green as the additional focus player. I'm fine with that. Man, I want his dev trait to be unlocked. Like, holy moly, how does he not have 500 snaps or whatever? So let's go take a look at our weekly game plan here. <clears throat> And we're going to start with head coach. Always win the turnover battle. Let's run the football. Actually, you know what? 
Let's sling it all over the field this week. Come on, guys. Let's get to the QB. And then let's get an interception. Those all kind of go hand in hand. So I kind of like that mix of the defensive objectives. If you're getting sacks and creating pressure, you might also get some INTs as well. And that should allow you to win the turnover battle. So we can get the trifecta. All right, I think we're ready to go here. We might have some player upgrades to uh, deal with. I'm not going to do any more staff upgrades with the nine points that I've got. All right, Kendrick Green gets an upgrade. We're going to go with power. He's up to a 70. You know, if you're a 70 overall and you've got some balance, you're a pretty stable player. So I like what he's given us right now. All right, we're going to go with Power Rusher. It's the scheme fit. It doesn't help his overall, which stayed at 94, but 94 is totally fine. If you're 94, like, across the board with all the different archetypes, you're going to be dangerous. I mean, he's already dangerous. Who are we kidding? All right, we're ready to go. So, advance week. And then I got to be really careful next week with the scouting situation because we're going to have uh, some stuff going on and the game is glitchy and I'll show you what I'm talking about whenever we get there. Do we get a win? No, we freaking lose to the Lions. 27-24, our first loss. Now the Chargers are 3-6, and six, so they're a disappointment, but... That's a disappointing loss. All right, we're going to go until we lose another one, though. All right. TJ Watt has been ruled out for this week's game. Next man up. You're always a next man up mentality. Always. All right, so Alex Highsmith is going to have a big chance. Now, they're asking a lot of him. Three sacks or tackles for loss. I mean, that's a big day for somebody coming off the bench. He's going to be back next week, so it's not the end of the world. But maybe that was part of the reason how the Lions were able to beat us, is if we were at, without him. We ended up getting eight staff points, so that's not terrible. But All right, so our undefeated season is history. Which is fine. We're still in a really good spot. Let's take a look at our re-signings here. Akura 4, only 24 years old. In the long run, he's probably going to just be a depth guy for us. He's only looking for a one-year deal. I'm fine giving him like a three-year deal. Sign him through his you know, 27-year-old season. As a result, I'm going to drop the bonus down. You're going to get a little bit less of a bonus because we're giving you a longer contract. He still wants two and a half million a year, so I need the overall offer to be at least seven and a half million to get him into the ballpark of where I think he's happy. So let's go to right around eight and see how how we do here. Boom, I like it. Lowering the bonus is a good idea for a guy that you're not like a hundred percent sure you're going to want him on your roster because you can release him without as much of a penalty. It's that signing bonus. That's the issue there. All right. Finney is 29 years old. He's just looking for a one year deal just to shore up our depth on the O line. Let's go ahead and try and just make that offer. There we go. And we're still doing pretty well with our salary cap situation. And it's not going to, we're not going to eat into it a whole lot with the rest of the guys that we need to re-sign. So we might have the ability to go get a few, you know, pieces in free agency. But we're going to be a little bit conservative there, I think. All right, so here's what I'm talking about with the scouting situation. And I'm going to save to demonstrate for anybody who hasn't seen this yet. I'm going to make sure that we actually, like I, you see here, I've got a couple of test sims. And I'm also doing a Raiders franchise on the side. Um, just, again, for the ability to do some 
kind of, uh, we'll call it tested dev. <laughs> Uh, messing with sliders and trying to figure out the right mix. It's a little bit difficult because the team is built differently than the Steelers are, but you'll get the idea. All right, so just to demonstrate, it says scouting, focus player, and you get all excited. You're like, oh, heck yeah, I could come in here and do this. Don't do that yet. Um, save your progress because once you go into either this or the tab for looking at scouting the players, you're, you've, like, if you just go and skip this and go straight into scout players, you can't get back to this. If you go straight into here and then realize, like, wait a minute, I actually want to look at the details of these players before I decide who to focus on, you, you have issues there. Now, look, like, these guys are at 95% completion for the most part. The one that we want to keep an eye on was this dude here. He's only at eight, uh, 80%. He's going to get to 100. But just to like demonstrate here, like I can click on it. He's now highlighted, but I still can't focus or, or like open up his details to look at the progress that we've made scouting him, which I think is so stupid because now that I'm in here, I don't have a ton of, wor of info to work off to figure out who I actually want to focus on. I like focusing on him because if he is as good as I hope he is, I can wait and try and get him in the second round, which would be huge for us because then, you know, I'd like to go and try and find some help at O-line, perhaps. So let's maybe pick one of these guys. Same thing. Like, I can't decide who to do because I don't know how good these guys are. Like, I see these guys dropping down the board, but that doesn't really help me. I don't know why they're dropping down the board. Um, so, now that we kind of know that that's an issue, what we want to do is back out, and now we're going to look at prospects. And we'll come back and do the, the scouting focus stuff shortly. But here's what I want to do. Like, I want to now come down here, wait, go to QBs, and let's look at Grant Crawford. If I now open him up, I can see some of the, the additional info that we've uncovered with our recent scouting efforts, okay? His throw accuracy is pretty much medium, or, you know, a B across the board, which isn't great, but it's not terrible. I'd like the accuracy for the short throws to be an A, but it's, it's not that far off. If it's a high B, I think we're okay. And again, his physical skills are top of the class. No question. And now we look at here. He's good at throwing on the run. He's got good ability to break sacks and hold on to the football. He's good at play action. Um, he's you know He throws under pressure fairly well. I don't know what his awareness is like, but if I'm going to be playing with him, I can control his awareness. I'd be curious to know what his injury rating is like, as well as his deep accuracy. If that's a B, this is a guy that I will... If, if we get like a B or better on some of those remaining uh, question marks, this is a guy I think we strongly look at taking. He might be a little bit of a project, but he's probably going to have a super high dev trait because of how athletic he is. That's what I'm thinking there. So that's one guy, Grant Crawford. We will focus our scouting efforts on him. Now, let's go to left tackle. And we're probably not going to get Henry Forden. We'll look at him just to, just to have a, an idea of what he can do B pass block we look at his physicals they're okay his agility is not the greatest his acceleration is okay like the agility at left tackle is maybe a little bit of a concern there but he's got great speed and great strength and strength is a key attribute at O-line he's a good pass blocker his run blocking finesse has a little bit of room for improvement perhaps but He's probably a guy that goes in the top 
15 of the draft. I don't think we're going to have a shot to get him. So let's look a little bit farther down here. He can't run block. If you can't run block, I don't want you. I won't accept anything less than a C in run block. I would like a B or A. I realize those are going to be hard to get. Okay, so this guy's got good awareness. His physical skills are pretty good. Strength is a little bit of an issue, but he might make up for it with a lot of the other stuff. So we'll see how polished he is on this side. Can't lead block. He's got good pass blocking finesse. So that's a maybe. I'd like to have seen a run block um, attribute unlock there. So maybe Ed Allen. Now left guard, I don't think we're going to go after anyone. Yeah, I, I don't think that's the right move. Same thing with right guard. I think we're okay at guard. All right, Dion Bird out of Penn State. What do you got for me, man? C for pass blocking. How about the physicals? Pretty good. I'd like to see the strength be a little bit higher, but that's not that bad. Come on, show me some run blocking. Pass block finesse and power are good. And then look at that run block finesse. And lead block, which tells me he could probably fire off the ball and get a good push. So I think Dion Bird is a guy that maybe we, we focus in on as well. So it was Cro the quarterback, I think, was Crawford. Dion Bird at right tackle. What else do we need? A, a corner. We're not going to get Frank Newton. I'm not even going to bother... I'll actually just look at how much we've scouted on him. Just to, yeah, man coverage and zone coverage are both an A. Now, if I remember right, his physicals aren't the greatest. Well, he's got top-notch speed. Yeah, he, this dude is a freaking stud. Holy crap, is he a stud. I mean, he can even return kicks. He's an injury issue, but he's going in the top five, and he's going to be probably like an 80 overall right off the bat from the looks of things so we need to try and pick the best guy out of like these four perhaps and see who we think is going to be the the top option we don't know his man coverage or zone coverage which kind of sucks he's got great speed and acceleration his agility is okay. Change of direction is not very good. So in coverage, he might have some issues. Stamina is okay. You can shed blocks. He He's a maybe. I'd need to know more about your ability to cover, though. I don't have any of that info to work off of. So it's hard for me to like hone in on him. D, man coverage. I'm not even going to bother looking at the rest. Because... That tells me you're just not going to be polished at all. Come on, Sean Tavius Crisp. Be my guy. Be catching. C zone coverage is not the greatest, but maybe be acceptable. Speed is okay. Change of direction has room for improvement. Acceleration is okay. He's got good agility. <sighs> Maybe he's moving up the board. Injury could be an issue. His tackling is okay. Uh, I mean, he's moving up the board, which tells me something that other people are maybe seeing or our scout is seeing, but I don't know. I got to put the fact that he's coming from Tennessee out of my mind because I kind of want him for that reason because I just like Tennessee. All right. Zone coverage is a B for Denard Green. He's got great speed. Acceleration and agility are, are a little bit of an issue. Change of direction is excellent. And his strength is okay. Let's see about skills, though. Play recognition. All right, we're going to just go with the dude out of Tennessee. Let's see what we've got there. He's moving up the board a bunch. So it's Crisp. 
uh, who is it? Dion something. Dion Bird. And Crawford. Those are our three that we are going to lock in on. It might be a mistake locking in on Crawford because at 80% already scouted, we might, like by the time this is all said and done, we might already know everything we need to about him. Um, but like you see now, if I come back here, scout college players, I can't go in to do the scouting focus. So what I have to do is quit and reload that save file that I did manually. Because any time you like back out of any menu, it auto saves, which drives me crazy. I think you can turn it off, but I'm not very good about it. All right, so here's the one that we want. I don't know if I ever mentioned that I did not just leave Mike Tomlin in as the coach. I think I did. I like to go with generic coaches. I don't really know why. I just do. Um, okay, so scouting focus we can now do, and we're going to go in, and you've got to do it right away. If you back out at all, it's gone. Like, Madden needs to fix that, because it's stupid. But as long as you know it and are prepared to deal with that appropriately, it's okay. So we got him, him, and him. And the, the general thought process here is we're hoping that that QB is good enough that I feel okay trying to take him in the second round. Then the hope is that one of the other two that we're looking at is good enough that I feel okay taking him with my first pick. So that's kind of the thought process here. And as you can see by my team needs, it's right tackle slash left tackle. I can't take both, so we're going to go with right tackle because Dan Moore, I think, is going to be our starting left tackle next year. Uh, quarterback, where Roethlisberger will be gone. We've got to find a replacement. And then on the defensive side of the football, corner is a C. D tackle is a D. Um, I kind of wish I would have looked at that a little bit more closely, but I feel like our scouts are somewhat focusing on that anyway. There's some depth here where we might be able to get one of these guys farther down the draft, but we kind of had to pick where to focus our efforts, and I feel like corner is the most important. So, all right. Did I actually accept that? I don't think I accepted that. So, now I need to go back out and do that again. I don't think I ever, like, approved it to do those three. So, I, I want to make 100% sure. So, apologies here for backing out, starting again, back it out, start it again. But we kind of need to. This is a lot of effort to get through, like, one or two weeks when you're just simulating. But it's just a lot going on. And I wanted to explain the logic as to why we're doing some simulations, as well as show you the scouting-focused stuff. So let's go back in here and do this again. <clears throat> so I'm, I'm pretty sure I didn't do it correctly that time. So uh, come here. Grant Crawford, Dion Bird, and Shantavius Crisp. And now I need to hit triangle to confirm. And then yes. So that is how you have to do that. So now we're good to go on that front. I don't think we need to do anything else with scouting until like after the season. So that's cool. <clears throat> we can, you know, perhaps keep an eye on some of that stuff as it goes, but it doesn't really change anything. It's just us knowing what's going on. So let's go to manage staff. No. There's nothing for me to there's nothing for me to do in there. So let's go to weekly strategy. I want to get to where I've got 20 points and can add another focus player. <clears throat> That'll give us 5. 
All right. Yeah, we're going to try and stop the deep pass. This is a, a pass-first offense. We don't want them moving it down the field in big chunks. Offensively, they're a zone heavy team they don't blitz a ton so yeah let's try and run it inside and maintain time of possession <clears throat> pass for two tds that's a that's a decent uh option there i suppose but let's look at the other stuff here uh can we get 15 plus first downs if we're running the football a lot i think that's a realistic shot we're going to probably need to run the football well to beat this team and we need to stop the run there we go <clears throat> so we're going to run it down close and throw it in we're going to stop the run uh yeah that's pretty much the summary of how we're going to try and win this football game now again that's what I say. Some of it's going to come down to what the actual sim wants to do. But whatever. <clears throat> Alright, so we're good on everything except for upgrading the players. And then we will get through week 11. Devin Bush gets one. We're going to go with Field General. It's the scheme fit. And I feel like the the upgrade uh, options that you can get out of that one are the most valuable. All right. Let's get it. Can we beat the Chargers? They're three and six. So they're struggling a little bit. And def I would say underachieving. So they're looking for a win here. Can we pull one out? Uh, no, we lost again. So we're eight and two. Dang it. Now it's time to get back in and actually play some games. And again, I think what we're going to do is go to a policy of maybe like if we win two in a row, we sim the next one. Um, if we win three in a row, we sim until we lose. How about that? It's pretty simple. He needs to be better. Okay, yeah. He didn't he didn't shine like he was hoping to, which I'm not surprised. All right, we've got enough staff points that we can get the um, additional focus player, which is awesome. So I think what I'm going to try and do is get us ready to jump into our next game here before we wrap up this episode. It's probably a good place to try and stop. <clears throat> I think we're coming up on about 45 minutes for the episode which is fine Mondo 66 overall he's a depth guy he's only 25 and only wants one year now let's drop down the signing bonus because if I'm only signing you for one year why would I give you this big signing bonus now I'll just crank this up we probably need to account for it with a little bit higher salary but that's not a big deal we still have 30 million in cap room see he wants a higher bonus just just ridiculous you're not a like really good football player <laughs> relative to the rest of the league so like I just, that that mechanic drives me crazy it's because it's guaranteed money they want that guarantee if you want a guarantee, I can take a dump in a box and mark guaranteed. All right. <clears throat> Scouting, we don't need to worry about. Manage staff. Let's come in and buy the second uh, upgrade to unlock another focus player. And once I get this one, see, like, all of the ones that I've been getting so far have pretty much been for the head coach. I want to continue to probably leave my focus there for the most part, but we might start spreading it out to the, the coordinators. We'll see. So now we've got another one, and the third one is still available for purchase, it says. 
So that would be sweet if we can get six additional focus players getting all those XP each week. Uh, let's go ahead and, well, we'll set the game day goals whenever we go in and do the weekly strategy. We're playing the Bengals. What's their record? Five and five. So it's a big game for them. Let's go weekly strategy. We probably need to, okay, so defend the outside run. If we can stop the run, then we can maybe focus our efforts on trying to stop the pass. They like to pass it a lot. You know, we'll stick with that. Our strategies the last couple of weeks haven't been working, so maybe we need to mix it up a little bit. Okay, they want to try and blitz. So we're actually going to... I want to change... I want to change to... Um, a blitz counter. So that's that. And now for our team profile, what have we got here? <clears throat> we have. Yeah, I'm okay with th throw two touchdowns. Let's try to win the turnover battle. Uh, let's see, let's try and get that passing game going. Pick it off twice is not realistic. Let's see if we can't get some sacks. We've got our new sliders there. We'll see if they come into play. So we're going to try and, uh, you know, move the ball through the air against this defense. It's going to be tough with Joey Bosa. Or no, we're not playing the Chargers. Uh, I feel okay with the defensive uh, you know, pressure coming from the Bungles. All right, so we don't need to be developing our punter. Look at this. Najee Harris is a superstar dev trait. Heck yeah. He's going to be skyrocketing up the, the charts as far as his development. That's awesome. So basically now what we're looking for is somebody who's young. Like, Devin Bush is a maybe here, even though he's not in his rookie season. At 23 and a star dev trait, if we focus on him, we can get him up to, the, like, the mid-80s a little bit quicker. So that's maybe an option. But where's, like, Chase Claypool? I think he's a better option here. He's already a 79 overall, but he's a star. And I kind of need help at the wideout position. If we can get Johnson, Claypool, and Schubert or Schubert uh, Smith-Schuster all healthy and cranking like this team becomes a lot different. Um, but I actually have somebody no, I was thinking Fryermuth, but we're already focused on him. What about Highsmith? Uh, I like this because he is going to be a starter next year let's try and get him up a little higher as far as his overall if we can get him up to like 76 77 i feel pretty good about having him in there every snap so all right good start to uh the next chapter of our experience Sorry, I'm distracted. Um, let's get the player upgrades, see who we've got here. We've got somebody coming back from injury, and I actually want to look at our injury report anyway. We might have some guys perhaps eligible to come off of IR. Ebron gets a, an upgrade. He's been a disappointment for, the, for me this year, honestly. Uh, Trey Turner gets an upgrade. Nice. Stick with the power. We're going to be a... a threat offensively if we can get an offensive line that's worth a damn. Because we've got some good skill players on this team. Nice. I love it when you do the route running and it improves the overall 
as well. That doesn't happen very often, but when it does, man, it feels good. All right, Najee Harris. We're going to stick with the power back. I, if I can get the power back up to like 85, then I might start mixing it up and looking at receiving. But he's already a 71 on that front. Like, he's really good. He's just a very good NFL running back, and he's going to get a lot better. So look out. If we can give him an offensive line, he's a stud. All right, who's coming back from injury? Oh, TJ Watt. So we know that, like, depth chart-wise, he's just going to plug right back into where he was. That's no secret. Now let's go back, and I want to look at the actual injury report to see if there's anybody there that's eligible to come back from IR. Sometimes they can where, like, they're not injured anymore. So, like, here. See, we've got a couple guys uninjured. So if I go over here and sort. Both Christmas and Dobbs are eligible to come back from IR. Now, the problem is I don't have any roster spots open. Dobbs, I don't necessarily need... Because we've got um, Haskins, who's better than he is anyway, and younger, so I think he would be the next man up on the depth chart anyway. I don't see anybody else that's really close. I don't know if Juju will be able to come back. He would have to be off of IR before the end of the regular season. Um, I'm pretty sure he's not going to be able to, uh, to make it back. I think it has to do with when you were placed on IR as to whether you're eligible to return or not. But, like, DeMarcus Christmas, we can we can try and bring back. But to bring him back, I've got to free up a roster spot. So, who do we have on the roster that's just trash that we don't need because we've got guys ahead of them to where they're never going to play? Um, we'll have to go position by position to be a little bit strategic about this. Like, I could probably release Josh Dobbs, honestly. But that doesn't free up a roster spot because he's already on IR anyway. I could free, I could release Mason Rudolph, but he's got such a big bonus that the penalty wouldn't be worth it. So, that's no bueno. I could probably get rid of Anthony McFarland, but he may eventually step in as one of my depth guys, like if Kalen Balage goes away, although I think we just resigned him to a one or two year extension. Not a big deal. We're not releasing any of those guys. How about it wide out? How deep are we here? Cody White He's just awful. So, he gone. I don't need you. He's not doing us any good. He frees up a roster spot. Doesn't cost us any money. Doesn't free up any cap room either. Was he on the practice squad, maybe? Yeah, I don't know. But we now have a roster spot open. So, let's go back and see if we can add Christmas back to the roster. And that will help us at defensive tackle. You know, I never even went in and looked at who's available in free agency. There might be some guys that were okay, but we never even bothered to look at. Yeah, see, I can remove him from IR. That's sweet. So let's go ahead and do that. He's back on the depth chart and uh, will probably be our number two D tackle, right, behind Bugs. Which, I mean, he's not great, but every little bit helps. So one more thing to do before we are ready to jump into the Bengals game is look at this depth chart status for the D-tackles. Uh, let's go the long way around to get here, probably, but whatever. 
see, he just, they drop him way down here instead of actually putting him in to where he belongs. I'm going to put him right here. I don't know why Bada is ahead of these guys. These guys are big enough that they can play the D-tackle position anyway. Like, Mondo is technically a defensive end, but he's the best out of anybody on this list. Let's go ahead and switch Davis and Christmas to stack them up in order of their actual overall. And that's it. All right, so that'll do it for this episode. Um, why does it say we still only have 53 men on the roster? Or 52 out of 53. I thought being on IR did not have you on the active roster. But whatever, not a big deal. Uh, that's going to do it for this episode. If you haven't done so already, please be sure to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, place, put, put some comments below as far as what you feel about us doing some of those games uh, by way of simulation. What it will ultimately help us do is get deeper into this franchise series before I get burnout from playing game after game after game. So I'm hoping that we can get several seasons down the road in this um, in this franchise before we end up uh, wrapping up the, the series. So if you haven't done so already, again, hit the like button, subscribe, and we will see you all next time. Good evening, friends and neighbors. Or shall I say this afternoon?